that big flame. Mayhem. That's literally going to be the first part of the video. Wow, look at that big flame. Oh, yeah. It's like nitro without nitro. That's it. I normally, <laughs> I normally cut all this stuff out because I, I got done. My very first video I uploaded, I got done because it, it was a raw. Yeah. yeah, you had the intro. This is random. I, I might keep this in. I might just keep this as the intro. It's just weird sounding like hearing me talk because I never like use a dictaphone or so I've got I husky use my voice. To phone normally. Yeah, but no, you know what I mean. You hear your voice a lot more because you record. I, I don't. Yeah, I, I don't record my voice. So when I'm hearing myself talk, it makes me laugh because it's like us. Ah, it's new. Yeah, it was fucking hilarious though. Let's face it. Yeah, we did a good show for two and two hours and fifteen <laughs> minutes. Are we in? We're in. Like a bad blood. It is like a bad blood, isn't it? Yeah. Hey everyone, Shabby Gamer here, and welcome to the first episode of our new WWE 2K17 Universe Mode. This is our first episode of Mayhem, live from Chicago, Illinois. I've lost my voice. Yeah. So our first match of the evening is going to crown our very first Mayhem Tag Team Champions. And PJ Toby, who actually joins me here this evening, has booked it as the Briscoe Brothers versus DIY in a Extreme Rules Tornado Tag Team match. We're in, we're out, we'll shake it all about. It is very much bad blood. I didn't realise when I created the arena how much bad blood it was. It's just a blood drip. It just looks like a bad blood paper. Uh, I've just realised all the people out there, this is the first time they've actually seen the Mayhem Arena. Yeah. Apart from the fireworks, obviously, a minute. All your hard work. Yep, it took me. I'm, I'm crap at creating arenas. I've made that apparently clear on all my previous videos. Yeah. And this is a bloody good looking tag team. Yeah. Considering it's a, it's a pay-per-view that you have created, it, it's pretty fine work. You know, even the Titan Tron. You know, it, it is completely original. Yeah, I tried to go very red and I, I, I don't know why I was insistent I wanted a black mat. I don't know why. I just want a black mat. But it's got that, I wouldn't say old WCW <laughs> feel, but That's they have a for. darker shade than yeah. the WWE. And it's like they're in oh, the Nation of Nation Domination. Of domination entrance, yeah. That's yeah, what it is. no, no, it's fine. It's absolutely fine. You're rebellious. Yeah, I suppose <laughs> that, that'll work. Yeah. So, of course, like we said, this is the crown, the first ever Mayhem Tag Team Champions in the ring. We've got the Briscoe Brothers, and joining them, of course. It's going to be DIY, and I've actually managed to download the same DIY, um, so we actually get both the same entrance t-shirts, which is good. Because when uh, you download two from two different people, you get different attires. Exactly, and knowing these have come from Cause, it's really good that the detail is so fine. Yeah, I think they've come from the Eamon. Eamon yeah. is, is probably one of the best out there at the moment. Yeah. I think I've got every single one of his Cause downloaded. And it's 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 a very bold move to, to make your very first match a tag team championship. I like it. No, Your I'm... entire card, though, is, is is I like it, but it's frustrating me. I'm ambivalent. <laughs> I think the phrase ambivalent. Because of the rivalry, because I am the the lead of Mayhem, and Mayhem being the first show, as there is the belts, which Mr. Luke has created. Fantastic looking belts they are. It's pretty good, isn't it? Yeah, but it, it's always good to start strong. You get <coughs> you, you get the interest. You get the viewership, and that's what this tag title is all about. These two teams are the best in the world. Let's see what they've got to do. They're very good cause, aren't they? Yeah. So extreme rules, tornado tag. So no disqualifications, no count outs, but pinfalls and submissions only count inside the ring. And of course, weapons are fully available. Always. And in case you were wondering, we are going to crown all four brand champions this evening. Our next match will be crowning the female champion, or the women's champion, if you will. Yeah. We've got a six-man ladder match later on, all of former television champions, and the winner will become our new television champion for the brand. And we're in Chicago, Illinois, so what a way to celebrate being in Chicago, Illinois, than having a main event of Joe versus Punk. I, I sound annoyed, but I I'm, I'm going to get it back. When we come to Throwdown later on the week, I'm definitely going to be getting this back. I've got a Carter and and, uh, and the other guy. And now, Mega, that's his name. The two rosters are a complete divide where I believe they're both equal and yeah. both pay to their strengths equally. Yeah. 
and that's where we provide good entertainment for you at home to show what we got to do. And then this is example of what we're trying to do, uh, trying to to bring to you, the viewer. I I'm liking this match. I really am. I mean, two really good tag teams. It's it's a. I didn't really when it first happened in NXT when Gargano and Champa basically came in as an enhancement team to put somebody else over. I never ever thought that in a couple of years' time or a year's time they would be fully signed and there'd be NXT Tag Team Champions and they'd be one of the top teams the company actually has. It, it's just, it never occurred to me these two guys would ever become a permanent tag team. Because so many tag teams have come through the doors and left the doors and yeah. come back. These are the, this is the tag team that has stayed. Just look at the American Pitbulls. Oh, well. well that, that was a one-off, that wasn't it? It, it was literally a one-off with names yeah. that weren't theirs <laughs> and... Before you knew it, they signed to TNA contracts. So, well, I suppose it's worked out well for them because now Eddie Edwards and David Richards are going to be having a, a championship feud. Yeah, exactly. The world championship. Who, who whereas... would have thought that Eddie Edwards would be TNA world champion? No one would no, have put that. I would have thought David Richards maybe had an outside chance, but obviously because of his injury. Yeah, but he's due to retire, isn't he? This is yeah. last year now. David yeah, Richards. he probably wants to become a full pledge uh, firefighter. Well, he's fireman paramedic already trained both, isn't he? Yeah. So the moment is pretty even at the moment. Both teams are really taking a a strong stance. As you can see at the moment, Johnny Gargano in control of Jay Briscoe, Mark Briscoe in control of Tommaso Ciampa. And because of the tornado rules, all four men are in the ring. This is completely different to what is normally brought to you. This is non-stop. This is all the way. I like this. It does get very difficult commentating though because you've got to watch two fights. The worst thing is six-man matches. So with this ladder match later, it's going to be bloody confusing. Oh, it's going to be all oh, over the God. place. <laughs> it's going to be crazy. But fun to uh, commentate at the same time. Yeah, normally we're going to only have five matches on a show, but tonight we're going to go for a full seven. Since it is our debut show in this universe mode, we're going to go full seven matches. And you're not going to be disappointed. Every single match is a potential main event, really. And again, this is to provide something different Yeah. to the generic WWE platform. This is mayhem. This is throwdown. This is new and impressive, and I hope you like it. Well, that's it. I, I, I'm annoyed at myself, really, for doing a generic universe mode to start things off with. I know people wanted to see what I was good at, which was just basically using my knowledge and obviously your knowledge of wrestling in general and creating a universe mode which is really going to be catering to everyone's needs. And we have got everybody in mind in this universe, mate. We've got literally everyone you can possibly want to see, I suppose. It's a dream team. Oh, yeah. It's a dream team of Definitely. wrestlers across the world from different organisations, all in one ring. Yeah. Your fantasy is here. Unless it's dwarfs. Unless it's dwarfs. Yeah, if you've got a fantasy of dwarfs, then <laughs> I've got a few websites for you. but <laughs> Not this one. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> Big Frog Splash. Nice. Big frog splash. Going for the pin as well, and Gargano hasn't noticed. We've kept it all in the ring here. Nothing has gone outside. That's it. Mark Briscoe's just won that with the frog splash. First tag team champions, the Briscoe brothers. Slightly stunned. I didn't expect yeah. that. Uh, no, no breakaway pin. No. Wow. Gargano wasn't. He, I think he noticed Gargano, which is far too late. And we've got brand new tag team champions. That you know what? I'm I'm not surprised. I have my money on these two to start with. To be honest. I just didn't and expect not, it to be in quick fashion. I'm not saying that just because they won. Of course. But I expected the Briscoes to come out on top of this, and they have done. So the Briscoes are going to start Mayhem as the tag team champions. And they look very good with them belts, don't they? They do. They suit them. They really do. And I think it's going to be very, very difficult for any tag team to take the belt away from these two. But And especially with a team the calibre of DIY, who can yeah. beat them? Yeah, you've... You've got a very strong tag division, but I think it's going to be a struggle for anyone to take the belts away from these guys. Of course. Uh, Mark Briscoe's actually missing teeth. He is. <laughs> it's a very realistic call. The gentleman. <laughs> and our next match here this evening is going to be for the Mayhem Women's Championship. It's Asuka, Ivelisse and Sasha Banks. And here we go. Now, triple threat matches on this match are generally very, very good, and I'm hoping this one is going to be just the same. I'm sure it will be. And this is your favourite female wrestler in the world. Asuka Your number is... one draft pick for oh, females. she is the greatest. I must admit she wasn't my number one draft pick as well, but you picked her. So. 
To be honest, before she entered NXT, never heard of her. No, I never you know, either. I'd never come across. I know she wrestled for Shimmer uh, and Shine. Shimmer, Shimmer. Shimmer, Shine. She worked everywhere. The key to my bimmer. And um, I, I'd never really heard of her. She came in with all this hype. And then when I see her wrestle, I was instantly impressed. Oh, yeah. It's the Japanese it didn't, style. It didn't take two or three matches for me to go. No. This could have progress. This is straight away world class talent. Yeah. There's no other way to put it. Fantastic. I think it's just the entrance as well. When, when you see her turn up and she's got the mask and the coat and everything going, yeah. you just... It's not one of these simple, generic females that just come out in scantily clad outfits and bounce around everywhere. She's, That's it. She's, she's a general hardcore bitch, really. Hardcore is to say the least. You know, she doesn't need weapons. She has her kicks. She has her punches. That's she it. doesn't need weapons. She will hurt you by any means necessary. And believe me, when she's facing against Ivelisse Velez and she's facing against Sasha Banks, this is going to be hard hitting and this is oh, going yeah. to be entertaining without a shadow of a doubt. With Ivelisse's MMA background as well. Yeah. It's a complete different contrast, all mixes of styles. So this is Ivelisse. I've not checked her in entrances yet. That's something I should have done before. Well, she's but... coming through the crowd. She's shielding it up. Yeah. I think this is very much um, Lucha Underground style, isn't it? Coming through the crowd. That's what they're doing in Lucha Underground quite a lot. Yeah. It suits her though, actually, the way, the way she's just like going around like she's going to murder someone. Well, she is Puerto Rican, so that's probably true. That she gives her a lot of hardness, someone. but at the end of the yeah. day, confidence is confidence. But when you're entering the ring with Asuka and Sasha Banks, you've got to, you've got to prove it. You're going to make sure you're worth the match. I can't believe you picked this card. I really can't. No, it's, it's not a bad card. <laughs> at the end of the day. <laughs> We need to set a standard. We need yeah, to I, set I've a standard. I've got to now keep to this standard. That's the problem I've got. Yeah. And of course, we will go to Showdown tomorrow first. Then we've got my show. Yeah. Throwdown. Showdown, then Throwdown. Showdown, then Throwdown. Which we've just realised rhymes. <laughs> and then, of course, we have Octane uh, later on in the week, which I'm really looking forward to Octane as well, actually. It's going to be a, a great show. The best high flyers from both our brands combining on one show. And hopefully, it will be a lot better than 205 Live, which is dead. Well, and as long as languid. we don't let Vince get his hands on it, we should be all right. Yeah. Yeah. A bit of Roman Reigns in there, that might be good. <laughs> I'm pretty sure Roman Reigns is going to get the Women's Championship at WrestleMania, just so he can have everything he wants. Exactly, at this rate, that's the way it's going to be. Yeah. Romana Unfor Reigns. Unfortunately, he wasn't drafted into the top 40 picks of just, wrestlers I, in the draft. It's such a surprise, isn't it? Not really. It's such a surprise. <laughs> <laughs> there was a couple of... Um, Surprises that was not picked in the draft. There's also a couple of surprises that were picked, I suppose. There was a couple that took a took us by surprise. I, I picked the Ascension, which I think everyone's surprised by. And I and I picked Dusty Rhodes again. No, Dusty Rhodes. Dusty Rhodes. Dusty Rhodes. It is Dusty Rhodes. Pick Dusty Rhodes. D Dusty Rhodes. But again, this is all about fantasy. This is the draft. This right. is something completely different to what you're seeing today across the internet. This is us. This is mayhem. This is SWE. That's it. Where else are you going to see these three ladies in the ring together? Nowhere. Unless SWE go out and just sign Ivelisse Velez and give well, had Asuka a promotion. They had her. They released her from FCW. Yes. Then she did dodgy gut check, and uh, then now she's ended up on the indie scene and doing pretty well. Actually, she's doing really well. I think a lot of people when when they get the control over their own gimmick, they seem to do a lot better. No, I should have a back body drop and went into a German on uh, Sasha Banks there. See, triple threat matches in this game are quite interesting because they'll start off very much like this of one person stepping back. And then as the damage starts to hit in, you'll see people roll out of the ring looking for a little bit of regeneration. It leaves the two people in the ring to continue the fight. So it's a very interesting uh, match concept. It's all a case of do you try and step back and allow the other two to fight or do you try and get in there and finish the match off quickly? And Ivelisse is just going to taunt the crowd instead. And well, she, can, she can afford to do that because Asuka's taken up a, a time with Sasha Banks. Of course. But not for too long. <laughs> so I quite like this arena, you know. It took me a long time. It's to fresh. It all out. It it's is. completely fresh. It's not your typical WWE standard. This is us. 
This is what we've created, which is different. This is something that is not normal to the current game. We have modified it. We've made it different for the viewer to just give something different. And bearing in mind, we've been doing this for the last 20 years, be it on this game, be it on Extreme Warfare Revenge, be it with wrestling figures, be it with just on paper. Any platform we've always we, done can, this. we can create. Yeah, we've always done this. Yes. So you saw Asuka, like I was saying there, dropped out the ring just to get a little bit of a uh, little bit of energy back, allowing Sasha Banks to take full advantage of Eva Lise, which is a situation that anybody would like. Of course. Yep. We're still going to get in trouble for some of these things. We may <laughs> get in trouble, but at the end of the day, we're having fun. Oh, yeah, that's the main thing. Yeah. I think my comment about The Undertaker putting Michelle McCall on his neck. With the pole necklace, <laughs> look, that's forgotten about. That's the draft. If you'd oh, like to boy. see the draft, again, you can see the video on Shabby Gamer. <laughs> it's a long video, but it's definitely oh, worth it's the worth watch. It, yeah, it's, it, I, I, I enjoyed it. I've watched it back twice so far. Yeah. And it's just, it's just hilarious. What's Asuka going for here? Is she going to go for a superplex, potentially? That's how she is. And Sasha's just uh, sitting back and waiting for the damage to happen. She knows that Asuka's going to take some damage by hitting that as well, of course. And there she comes in, reaping the benefits, going into Asuka. Yeah, Ivelisse drops to the outside. Tornado reverse DDT. I believe. There's a return. Yeah. It is. I have double think myself sometimes when I'm calling these moves. Asuka reverse in there with the arm drag. And again, still Ivelisse on the outside. It's a good thing for Ivelisse. She probably knows that the match is not close to finishing yet, so she's just regaining a little bit of energy and uh, making sure she's back to full fitness before she enters the ring once again. Quite short, actually. You don't realise how short... Uh, it's how tall the ropes are, I suppose, isn't it? Look at the referee. It's more or less at his forehead. I mean, all three women are generally uh, short in size. However, that doesn't uh, refrain them from uh, their expertise you, you can see right now that they are they are the real deal well that's it I think uh, Asuka's going to go for the running hip drop there, there it is. is it's one of her signature manoeuvres and she catches Sasha before Sasha gets a chance to get her she locks her into the Asuka lock straight away Ivelisse is down and Asuka locks in the submission hold middle of the ring this could be brand new champ well it's going to be brand new champion either way isn't it but yeah I bet Ivelisse is there to break it up Asuka almost had that one in the bag, locking in a, a finishing submission, but Ivelisse was there in time to break it up. See, I have a problem on this game with um, with Sasha Banks' finisher, because she uses the bank statement, but because it's got the backstabber beforehand, it always seems to roll it into the ropes. Yeah. It's very difficult to use on this game. Ivelisse, yeah. German suplex, I thought she might bridge for the pin there, but decides to go... She's going to go for the pin afterwards. Drops it now. from the ropes. Yeah, Sasha's on the outside. It's only a one count, though. The thing is that dragging away from the ropes is a great thing to stop the rope break, but at the same time, it, it, it just gives the opponent a bit more time to recover. That's it, you lose time. Asuka's going to go for the pin now herself. Sasha still just about getting up to her feet, but not able to stop the pin, but it was only one count anyway. Asuka misses the drop kick. Sasha banks on Saito, suplex, and again, evenly spending more time on the crowd than she is on her opponents. She does have that sort of attitude and that sort of uh, chip on her shoulder, and it could cost her in this match. Saito suplex there by Sasha Banks. And this one I'm saying, I don't think rope breaks count in a. No disqualification. No disqualification. And it's very well placed. So this is going to be bank statement locked in, rolls it through, no rope break. Asuka locked in the Asuka lock earlier on, but Sasha Banks now locking the bank statement. I think this may be over. I think this may be over here. Ivelisse is down. Can Asuka fight her way out? We're going to get a brand new champion. No, she Asuka fights her way out. out. Rolls her into the pin. One, only one count. Wow. So we've seen both the Asuka lock and the bank statement now, and neither leading to a victory so far. Eva Lee's locking Asuka into a reverse DDT. Drops into the pin while Sasha's in the corner. One, two, oh, two count. You know what? I'd love to see Eva Lee win this, but for some reason I just think she is the underdog. Anybody can win this match. Absolutely anybody. All three of these girls have fantastic talent that anyone can win. No one is the only dog in my what opinion. Lovely. What a hurricane runner. What a lovely move that was. The reason why I picked these three ladies is because they are the best in the world, in my opinion. These are the top three. I can't see anybody 
who is better than these three at the moment. I must admit, at this point in time, I'm very jealous. I must admit, because <laughs> these are three women that I would love to have on my roster. And I'm sat here now thinking, who the hell did I pick if I didn't get these three? <laughs> Even least the pin. Two. Oh, again, that was close, that was. Two, wow. and, two and a quarter. <clears throat> two and seven apes, as um, Jim Ross would kindly say. That was um, Nigel McGuinness kept using that phrase, didn't he, in the UK tournament. That's two and seven eights. Oh, yeah. You know I'm saying? That was my best. Why am I doing a British accent like British? What's the point of that? <laughs> <laughs> I don't even know why that happened. Yeah, Jim Ross used to cry that a lot back in WCW. Oh, did he really? I bet yeah. that's where Nigel McGuinness really saw it from, didn't he? Oh, yeah. Sasha, well, that's not Sasha. Um, Ask with a pin after the site of suplex on Sasha, but it's again only enough for a two count. See, triple threat matches always seem to go a bit longer. But it's a good thing. I think they're always the best matches. It's got a bit more flow to it. Yeah. You know, there's not a lot of, of standing. It's, a, it's, it's constant. Ooh. Oh, lovely armbar there. Locked it in. I wonder if the damage done by the Asker lock earlier on is going to affect this armbar. She's central to the range. She can't get to the ropes. And here comes Eva Lee's to break yeah. the hole. Stamp it right on the chest of Asker. All three ladies back on their feet now for the first time in quite a while. It's not going to last for very long though, is it? As Asker locks in the Asker lock again. And Sasha surely should break this pin up. Surely, surely. Come on, Sasha, do your job. There she goes. Breaking it up. Sometimes this game worries me, you know. It really does. When they stand Any there staring at it. It's... Anything can happen. The control of AI. Anything can happen in this game. Yep, I've... Whoa. Lovely. Whoa, that was... Uh... Well, That was crazy sort of angle there. That was a... Sasha's going to try and pick up the uh, the pieces of Asuka's Asuka lock to... Oh, God, she nearly did it. She nearly stole I mean, it. Very nearly. That, very nearly. That freaking power driver. That was, that was a, a DDT, not a power driver. Well, that was a DDT, but that was RVD-like in the way that he spiked that was real spike, the DDT was. to the way that she fell to the outside. He believes Fisherman Suplex Bridge for the pin. Asuka's got her back to it for some reason. And she does break it. I was getting... Lovely. The thing is, I don't mind anyone winning this match, but I don't want it to be won on a dodgy finish like that. Yeah. And this game is dodgy for that. Eva Lee's locking in reverse dragon sleeper, but it, there is rope breaks, apparently. The referee gave a rope break there. Surprisingly enough, in a three way. But Eva Lee's now lo looking for her finisher maneuver. She's going to go for a sunset flip bomb. Hits it, locks in for the pin. No rope breaks. One, two. Eva Lee's is the yes! champion. <laughs> Eva Lee's the underdog. Oh, God, I'm so Eva Lee's Velez. I'm so happy about that. Is the brand new. Mayhem, oh, women's champion. I am so happy about that. Like I said, I try to, I try to stay impartial, but that is the winner I wanted. Nothing is impartial in mayhem. No. Anything can happen here. Eva Lee's the first women's champion on your brand, and a very good women's champion to have as well. I'm, I'm good. Ben. Still jealous. I didn't get it. Still jealous. <laughs> See, I like that because it's, it's technically the Divas Championship, but it's not. It's red. It's red. Yeah, it suits your brand color. Mm -hmm. But then it's got the butterfly. I don't know. I like it. Ish. I like it. You're still recording, by the way. So our next match has just been decided as a number one contendership match for the Tag Team Championships here on Mayhem. It is going to be the Sky Blondes, Jack Evans and Helico taking on the Time Splitters, Alex Shelley and Kushida. Did he pop the microphone? <laughs> and here we go. So an interesting shout, considering that we've had the Briscoe Brothers versus DIY... And now we're making the Sky Blondes versus the other team. What the other team called? Time Splitters. We're making this in a more contendership match. And yet we still haven't seen the Heart Foundation. We haven't seen New Age Outlaws. We haven't seen the club. It just, it just goes to show how strong these rosters are, doesn't it, really? It does. It just proves that anybody can have the opportunity to go for the tag team titles. And in my opinion, that these two teams here are the strongest teams at this current time. This is a number one contendership match. Anything can happen. And two teams we will see quite a lot on Octane as well. Of course, our Cruiserweight only show. So either of these two teams, if they do get the number one contendership here and then they go on and face off an Octane as well, we could potentially have double champions. No reason why not. And this, I, I quite like these two. This is a... This Kushida, I've struggled to find a decent Kushida for quite some time, but this one I think is actually really good. He's not completely orange like the rest of the ones that are on the PS4 community creations. Of course, and there are people out there saying, why couldn't we do the motor machine guns? Quite simply, 
we could not find a Chris Sabin that was good enough. Yeah, this Kashida is a lot better than any Chris Sabin we could find. All the Chris Sabins look more like other people, don't they, really? Yeah, they don't look generic, and that is what we're trying to find here. We're not going to give you someone that looks substandard. We're going to make sure that this is the best quality we can provide. And here we go. We're going to start off with Alex Shelley and Angelico in the ring. The South African and the American. I don't know why I went into that, because there's only one South African. Everyone, oh, no, there's South African, Japanese, and two Americans, aren't there? Where's Alex Shelley from? Where, where is Motsumi? Is it? It's definitely America, it but I don't know which. Well, it would be the Motor Machine, so it would be the. I think it's Detroit. Detroit. It's Detroit, Detroit it would Detroit be, Michigan, yeah. yeah. And Helico just trying to grab it, someone's not there. And then he goes for the quesadilla. Lovely. It's not called a quesadilla, but that's what I call it. Is it the quesadora? A quesadilla is a Mexican meal that I really like, but. <laughs> I, think a quesad I think that's a quesadora. Or over the top senton, if you're just going to be very. That's American what I was going to say. I still like quesadilla stuff. <laughs> in comes Kushida. Early tag for this team. But first chance to see Kushida in the ring. I'm interested in this one because, again, I've, uh, I really like Kushida's work in New Japan. This is the first time I've really had a decent version of him to use on the game. And so far, he's looking like he's going to go high flying. He's going to go for a springboard here. William and Helico back up to his feet and completely misses the dropkick. Well done, 2K, for a fantastic coding. Absolutely. Yep. I know. I'm going to jump straight over the top of the guy. Again, I'm from Bristol again for some reason. So Kushida now taking him up. A very, very loose version of a suplex. Didn't quite get his hand run, isn't it? No, exactly. A snap suplex, but uh, he'd done the job. He did, did the job, yeah. And again, quick, fast tags here from uh, Times that is really showing their, their tag team uh, prowess. Oh, Shelly knocking. Uh, and Hager down to go, go for a dive. Go for a dive. Go for a dive. No, I didn't go for the dive. Again. It's this so is rare. for the number one contendership for the Mayhem Tag Team Championship. That's it. Both teams are putting everything on the line for this one. They know what is up for grabs. A chance to face off against... Oh, Dragon Suplex on Lovely. the outside. A chance to face off against the Briscoe Brothers in an upcoming episode. Will, will we get the match pretty soon or will it be saved for the first pay-per-view? What do you think? I believe it will be a pay-per-view event. I think it probably should be a yeah. good quality match. Our first pay-per-view is coming up in the next few weeks. It will be a tournament we're going to put forward, aren't we? It will be a tournament that will be put forward for the mayhem. Yeah, and um, I'm going to ask you at some point over the next few days to uh, to give me a list of eight men that you would like to compete in that tournament. Of course, we are going to exclude the champions from that because we do want the championships to be defended over that weekend as well. So I'll get that list from you at some point and we will uh, upload an extra video showing you exactly who PJ Tovey has put forward. It is going to be competing, so I'm going to put forward eight from Throwdown. PJ Toby is going to put through eight through Mayhem, and then the winning brand will get to pick somebody from the undrafted pot as well. So it's a, it's a big advantage for anyone, really. There's still some big names in that undrafted pot. Anyone in that undrafted pot, trust me, there was so much to choose from. Call yeah. them a free agent. These are guys who are untapped resources. These are guys who can be picked off at any time. And I think after a few weeks of seeing how our rosters play out, we'll be able to see if there's any weaknesses. But I don't really think there is going to be any weaknesses. I think we've both got so many good tag teams. The female division looking pretty strong. The, well, we saw how strong the female division looked in the last match. The cruiserweight division, as we can see in this match here, is looking pretty strong as well. The fact that you've got these four guys, though, and you've got Phoenix and you've got Drago. I've got Eddie Guerrero, Rey Mysterio. You've got Jushin Liger as well. The... the oh. The talent pool is absolutely it's just massive. Insane. It's insane. And that was the whole point of what me and Shabby Gamer have tried to achieve. We have produced a fantasy. This is These are matches you will never see. We are creating them for you. That's it. This match here is basically Triple H versus... Triple H? This match is Triple A versus New Japan Pro Wrestling. It's stuff you're not going to see as... And Helico go for the buckle bomb. Strong lad and Helico. You don't really notice it how strong he is but because of how much he moves in the ring. He's so agile. He reminds me, not reminds me of, but because he looks completely different. But Apollo Cruz is a man who's very strong but very agile. And that's the same sort of way Angelico is. You don't realise, you think as Angelico is a big high fly, then you realise he's, 
He's six foot plus. The guy is massive. Absolutely. He really is. And it's it's incredible to see how he gets on. It's also amazing to see over the last few years just how many good wrestlers have come out of South Africa as well. You look at Justin Gabriel and Ahelico, you've got even Aldo Rose or Kruger or whatever they call him these days. Well, we'll call him Aldo Rose because we won't get done for copyright. But uh, yeah. he will be... There, there is a very good uh, pool of talent coming from South Africa. Of course, you've got Kofi Kingston. <laughs> well, he's from Ghana. From or Ghana, West Africa. Whatever state he is from America, depending on what WWE want you to know. Depends what they fancy that week, I think, isn't it? Yeah. Oh, Kimura lock here. Ooh. By Kushida, has the leg side as well. Could this be over? Doesn't seem like Angelico is too worried at the moment. Doesn't seem to want to come in. There we go. Alex Shelley breaking free. Alex Shelley? That's Jack, that's Josh Jack, Jack Evans. Evans. I thought his hair looked funny. Big uppercut there by Jack Evans. Now sending Kushida into the corner. Now one move that Jack Evans has used quite a lot of Lucha Underground, I don't know if it's on this game or not, but um, it is a... Did Kushida just knock out a cartwheel for no reason? Yeah. Well, that went badly, didn't it? Um, yeah, Jack Evans has used quite a few times in Lucha Underground a Canadian Destroyer from the top rope, which I'm pretty sure is going to kill somebody at some point. It's a very dangerous move. Unless it's executed properly, it can cause serious damage. Yeah, I, I don't know if it's on this game or not. It's... Oh, what a springboard <laughs> moonsault. Oh, my controller's gone quick. We'll cut oh. this. We'll cut it out. We'll cut it out. Lovely. That was so off cue. <laughs> <laughs> you couldn't even commentate on that, mate. I was like, oh, shit, what happened? Right. I can cut that out. <laughs> we'll cut that out. We'll cut that out. I probably haven't. I probably forgot to cut that out. Oh God, <laughs> that was overshot to say the least. That's how bad Jack Evans's alliance salt was. It completely drained the battery from the controller. So Evans bringing Kushida back up to his feet. Big right hand and a reverse hurricanrana, which for some reason just stunned the referee into unbelief. There. You know these referees are soft nowadays, and incredibly generic as well. Only a two count. Alex Shea didn't quite get there in time, but Kushida was able to kick out. And the amazing thing is all four of these guys have the potential to currently be our cruiserweight champion on Octane as well. Of course, under the 205 limit as far as weight's concerned. Oh my god, that was insane. That was a 680 cent on from quite some distance across the ring as well. That's a free. And there we go, and Helico takes out... Uh, Alex Shelley and the Sky Blondes are the number one contenders I was not expecting I don't know why I had my money on this one on the time splitters I must have been anything can happen here at SWE Mayhem it's absolute mayhem here tonight it really is of course pardon the pun oh god pardon the pun there we go then so we're going to see the Sky Blondes versus the Briscoe Brothers at our very first pay-per-view for the Mayhem Tag Team Championships I'm liking that I'm liking a, that. That's not a bad tag team event. I don't know if the Briscoe brothers are going to take that too well. I think they're probably going to just basically kick the crap out of these two, to tell the truth. But well, you've got two different styles. You've got the Sky Blondes that are very aerial and the Briscoes that are very grounded. So it will be a contrast of two styles that should be uh, in line for a great match in the future. That's it. If the Sky Blondes can make it a high-flying match, then they may be very advantage if the Briscoe Brothers can keep these two guys grounded, then again, it's going to be a great advantage. Yeah. And here is our next match. It is going to be Daniel Bryan taking on Finn Balor one-on-one. -on -one. What a freaking match. It's a dream match. This is a match that has never been on WWE television. And that's because it's so good it would potentially explode your television. Unfortunately, timescale does play a part in what's going on. Daniel Bryan did retire before Finn Balor made his main roster debut. So this is quintessentially the dream match. I think Daniel Bryan was afraid of Finn Balor, that's why he retired. Not a, no, not at all. <laughs> at the end of the day, Daniel Bryan sustained an injury that couldn't get past WWE doctors. So for you, the fans, for us, the commentaries, this is the dream match. There's still there's still potential. Of there's, course. There's rumours of Daniel Bryan returning at some point this year against potentially The Miz, maybe, or... Because of their shoot angle that appeared on Talking Smack, 
In my personal opinion, Daniel Bryan is on the shelf. WWE will not <coughs> sign him off due to his successive concussion injuries. I agree. I, I don't think they'll take the risk. I really don't think they would, but... I don't know. They, they, they seem to have really... They had that one thing with the Miz, then it just sort of died down out of nowhere, like they were trying to hide it, and it was a one-off. But then it started to build up again. I don't know how they're working this. I really don't. I believe you Dan watch it. You watch it end up being fucking Miz versus Shane McMahon instead. I believe that Daniel Bryan. The only way he's going to move forward is going to Japan. That's my personal opinion. He'd be welcomed with open arms in Japan. I'll of tell course. You. And there he is, Finsky Balazer. Mr. Finn Balor. Am I the only person who uh, listens to this music and walks around put my arms up in the air? Of course, this track did enter the top 40 in the iTunes chart. It's this, a pretty good song, though, isn't it? It is, considering it is a instrumental. It happens a lot, though, because it didn't Fandango's song after WrestleMania a couple of years ago get to, like, number two or number four in the UK? It did do very well in the British charts, but that and is... Everyone was Fandangoing around the world. They were Fandangoing. Yeah. I think Fandango and Tyler Breeze are quite funny now, you know. I think they're doing pretty well as a comedy act. You see, recently in the Fashion Police, and they, they're giving out tickets. They are <laughs> giving out tickets, but uh, SmackDown is doing very well at the moment. So whatever they're contributing oh, well, yeah. to the show is always a positive. Yeah, well, you can't get much worse than Raw, can you? Really? Of course. And Raw was the and is always the standout show. Well, I can imagine the the offers of Raw at the moment. Our ratings are lower than SmackDown. What should we do? Let's push Roman Reigns more. Let's push Roman Reigns yeah. and bring in Goldberg part Again time. Again from Bristol, obviously. All, of all the course. writers are from Bristol. We are not from Bristol. That, that was a Jimmy Jacobs impression, that was. There you go. <laughs> My name's Jimmy Jacobs. <laughs> it does seem very, very outlandish to, to have lower ratings than your rival show and to push somebody who's notoriously not doing very well with the crowd. I think at the mo what's going to happen at, at Royal Rumble is that the crowd are going to be so behind Kevin Owens because a lot of the crowd are behind Owens anyway because of just these Kevin Owens. And if you take into account that people hate Roman Reigns, all of a sudden Owens has become the face yeah. in that match. And, it's, uh... and one thing you've got to remember is SmackDown back in 2003 was the main show. Yeah, with The Rock and everyone, yeah. And take her. Paul Heyman was writing the script, and uh, it wasn't long before he sent to OVW, and SmackDown never progressed as much as it could have done. Well, that's it. They sent him to OVW because they were embarrassed about having SmackDown higher than Raw. And that's of just course. that's just stupid. That's just biting your own hand off, isn't it? It is. It is really is stupid. But this match is going to be insane. So we are running this one on slow momentum as well to try and get the full effect out of it. It's slow momentum, but again, this is a match you may have seen across the indie scene. However, on WWE, it's never been seen. I don't know if the match ever would have arrived, you know. I don't know if this match ever would have existed. Because uh, when did Brian sign for WWE? About 2000... No. 2007? Seems like a long time ago, doesn't it? I'd say it was around uh, 2008 slash 9 where he signed a deal with the WWE. At that time, Prince Devitt, Finn Balor, was working in Japan. At that, they, they never crossed paths. No. But very similar styles. I remember one of the very first indie matches I ever watched was a Dragon Gate USA. And it was the last match of Daniel Bryan's second stint on the indie scene after he got sat by WWE before he got retaken on. Mm -hmm. It was Daniel Bryan versus Naruki Doi. And my God, it was incredible. That was one of the matches that really opened my eyes to actually watching indie wrestling for a change. And it was just insane. I think it actually, if you look on um, Dave Meltzer's list of five-star matches, is actually one of the matches on there. It was just, it was, it was fantastic. The entire card was fantastic. But I think they had that match and then Daniel Bryan came out and said... Um, that he was leaving the indie scene in good hands and he uh, left it to David Richards. Yeah. And then David Richards had a match against Akira Tozawa in the main event. And again, it was another five-star match. They were both fantastic matches. I remember David Richards hitting a dive and just completely missing his target, completely missing the barrier and taking like four rows out 
in the crowd. A lot of five star matches do occur when it is not in a WWE ring. You know, there are very few matches that have given the five star rating. Yeah, I think there's a CM Punk, two. John Cena from Money in the Bank. Yeah. Again, I believe that may have been the last time yeah, it was. that a five star rating was given by Dave Meltzer. Yeah, it was, yeah. WWE have got time to catch up on. However, the indie scene are. There's no limits on the indie scene. There's no. Of course. There's no one looking over their shoulder trying to say, you can't do this, you can't do that. Well, there's no there. scripts. There's no pre angst. It's you go in there, you give it all, you give it your best, and you, and, and you get the results. I think a lot of WWE stuff's rushed because if you look at a lot of the five star matches, they're ones that have really been given a lot of time. You look at Omega versus Okada, which was obviously six stars out of five, which is, well, you know. Um, and that was 56, 57 minutes long, yeah. that match. There's no such thing as a 56 minute match in WWE history That's unless it. it's classed as an Iron Man match. The WWE, I believe, don't focus as much attention to the detail as much as Japan and Ring of Honor. Because at the end of the day, WWE have to please the television. And that's something that you can't do in a half an hour match. It can't be done. It's amazing to think this is just the fourth match on the card. We've still got Joe versus Punk. It is. We've still got a six-man tag match. We've still got a six-man ladder match for the television championship to come. Yeah. That's just, it's just insane. It, the, the, these two shows will provide you with the best wrestling on WWE 2K17. You're not going to be, are you really? They're just every single match you put together this evening is just a dream match. It really is. Yeah. And Joe versus is, Punk in the main event is just I mean, insane. this is consequently a dream. This yeah. is what you're going through right now. This is not your WWE Raw or SmackDown main event superstars. This is SWE Mayhem. This is what we have created for you so you're not seeing the substandard type of matches you've been seeing lately this is created by us for you and you're not going to see the same match over and over again that you're doing raw of course you're not going to see um a, a combination of was it jericho owens seth rollins and roman reigns for the last three months that has been the main event of every single raw i'm pretty sure and i would say the best two things of what we're trying to provide for you there is no John Cena. There is no Roman Reigns. We are wrestling, and this is what we provide for you. Well, that's what we sort of said. We wanted to try and provide a roster where anybody could beat anybody. It wouldn't be a surprise. And uh, that's potentially what you could see right here. Ah. See, Finn normally follows that big drop kick in the corner with the, uh, the coup de grace, but this time he decides to go against it, and now he may end up regretting that as... Daniel Bryan with the strikes into the chest. Every single one compressing the chest and just forcing the oxygen out of the lungs of Finn Balor. And a big roundhouse to the side of the head, which could knock him unconscious. I thought he was going to go for the bell lock, then I really did. I refuse to call it the yes lock. I always call it the bell lock. Even after a few beers, and I can't pronounce the bell right. No, it's the la bell lock. The bell. It's not the yes lock, it's not the low lock, it's the la bell lock. I miss the man of a thousand submissions. I really do. Mr. Dean Malenko. I've got my roster. Dean Malenko versus Daniel Bryan's coming. Interpromotional. We're going to have to do a bragging rights pay-per-view, aren't we? Of course. Although the pay-per-view itself in real life was an absolute dud, we can provide a bragging rights pay-per-view. Oh, mate. You look that at the will rosters. be off the charts. You look at the rosters. It's incredible. Flying elbow. Again, just forcing the oxygen out of the chest of Finn Balor. And Daniel Bryan is struggling to contain himself and get to his feet. Ring rust. Ring rust is to say the least. I believe it may be a lack of stamina. He's going to bell lock. He's going to be very close to the ropes when he locks it in. And I think Finn Balor might be able to reach him straight away. I know he wrenches him back and he does just about hold him away from the ropes. And Finn Balor taps. He's tapped. Whoa. He's absolutely tapped. Daniel Bryan has wow. won this match. Wow, this might have been... This might have been a match just for nothing, but at the same time, it is obviously going to really affect the rankings, and Daniel Bryan's going to definitely go up the rankings, and Finn, unfortunately for him, is going to drop a little bit down. Of course, this is about bragging rights. This wow. is Daniel Bryan putting himself back on the map to say, oh, I've still got it. I've beat the best of what you've got to give me. Who's next? In the words of Goldberg. 
Well, that's it. You've got a main event this evening of a, a basically a Ring of Honor classic, and you've got a man here in Brian Danielson, really trying to show that he should be part of that Ring of Honor start as well. I'm sure Daniel Bryanson, Daniel Bryanson, Brian Danielson. Let's just call him Daniel Bryan. Is he potentially going to be one of your men for um for a big tournament? Possibly. I think after a win like that, you, I, you can't I can't see him. why he can't be in the top eight right now. But after a win like that, you can't overlook him. Of course not. Build a momentum going forward. Yeah. And here we go. Our next match of the evening is going to be a six-man ladder match for the television championship. We've got Scott Hall, Kurt Hennig, Mr. Perfect, Ricky the Dragon Steamboat, Booker T, and Dusty Rove, and Sting. We can't help but make the speech impediment of Dusty Rhodes. I think he was But the, the man is a legend. He is. And you've picked all six of these guys mainly because they're all former television champions. They are former television champions. And this is where we present our inaugural Mayhem the TV champion. Mate, Ricky Steamboat in a ladder match is just insane. Of course. Every one of these competitors has had experience in the ladder match. I'm just wondering how Dusty Rhodes is going to encounter this one because he seems to be the little one out of... Out of his style, really, isn't this? Dusty Rhodes' weight proportion doesn't really suit the ladder match. At the end of the day, anything can happen. A lot of these matches are luck-based, aren't they, really? It's of all course. Down to, uh, everyone else taking each other out. You get the opportunity to climb the ladder. That's it. So Ricky Steamboat, one of the very first television champions, was the early early 90s? Of course. There was, there was times when he was competing in the mid-80s. This man has seen it all. This man has been through it all. He has wrestled everybody. A true veteran and a master of the art. And I think, again, if we do do bragging rights, we've got to do Ricky Steamboat versus my match in my match. Absolutely. Savage. Recreating WrestleMania 3. The match that stole the show, which WWE won't admit because they still want to make out that Hogan slamming Andre was the big moment of that pay-per-view. But Nah, everybody match... knows, and we don't need to repeat it, this man is brilliant. I think this is the first time I've ever seen Booker T on this game. I've never once used him, and you put, you picked him. I picked Booker T because I'm a general fan of Booker T. This man is has won titles across WCW. He's won titles across the WWE. TNA, if you want to go further. This yeah. man has won gold. This man has won gold everywhere. He has laced his boots. This man is legitimate. This man is a five time. Is a five time. Five time. Five time. Five time. Five time WCW champion. That was only three time. It was not three times. You missed, was... you missed two five. Are you counting my fives? Okay. No, 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 no. This man's a five time WCW champion. All the respect for Booker. Mm. Is Stevie Ray not on this game anymore? He is, but it was a bunch of dumb. It was, it no, he, like was, he was on the game last year, probably. Really? Yeah. Mm. Adam Heat, yeah, he was on the game properly. I can't remember. I remember on this game. I can't remember. That's why I put Booker. Would you really use Stevie Ray and Booker T as a tag team, though? No, no I wouldn't have it. It's all about Booker. I think last year's game there was a, there was um there was an actual Harlem Heat version of both. Really? As part of a DLC. Booker. See when the next DLC comes out, and we do another draft, which hopefully won't be too far away. Because I, I think I enjoy the draft more than anything else. And here he comes, Mr. Perfect, Kurt Hennig. This man is just... Before his time, really, wasn't he? He was performing the modern day art of wrestling in the 80s. Yeah. This man was before his time. Again, a man I think who actually did pretty well in the ladder match, I think. I, I wouldn't say he's so much famous in a lot of mad matches. This man knows how to execute a perfect match. This man is quintessentially the man. I'm looking forward to this. I really am. So, so far we've got um, Rick of the Dragon, Steamboat, Booker T and Kurt Hennig, Mr. Perfect. All former TV champions. Who's your money on this match anyway? With six, with six options, anyone can win. I'm going Scott Hall. Absolutely anybody can win. I'm going Scott Hall. I'll decide my fate halfway or You're going to decide your fate when match. someone's got hold of the belt at the top of the ladder I right now. I feel like Bobby Heenan. 
At the end of the day, during the match, anything can happen. I'll decide my fate. You're going to be a Jerry then. Lawler and pick someone different every two minutes, aren't of you? Of course, of course. Here he comes. Again, somebody I've not used in this game at all yet so far. This is the American dream. We don't need to put the accident. This is the polka dot, Dusty, Dusty Rhodes. Rhodes. One of the first TV champions ever established in American wrestling. This is Dusty Rhodes, the living legend. I don't think Dusty Rhodes is very well suited to a ladder match, is he really? Anything can happen in a ladder match. It doesn't mean because he's 300 plus pounds that he can't win this ladder match. Anything can happen. I'm don't write the roads off. Anything can happen. I'm 200 plus pounds. I can't climb a fucking ladder. Anything can happen. <laughs> Again, it, it's so random on this game. It really could go either way, really, couldn't it? Of course. So next out is going to be... Scott Hall. My pick for the one. This is Shabby Gamer's pick for the lot. It is Scott Hall, a former, again, TV champion. I think, I think he's, I mean, he's definitely the highest rated in the match. But I'm not just going to rate him. I just got a feeling that him being in the inaugural ladder match in WWE. Of course. Against Shawn Michaels. WrestleMania 10 with Shawn Michaels innovated the ladder match. I think he's definitely a good shout for that. Then again, you got Sting as well. Sting is a real wide card. In again, this Sting is possibly the favourite. So I li like what you're doing here. You're, you're sort of um, you're giving the TV championship, the mid card championship, a really strong backing early on. Of course, the mid card is not to be wasted. This is a full pledge show from the start to the finish to the middle to the end. Well, that's it. You can have it's. It's essentially another. It's another main event championship. It is. Especially that's... if someone like Sting was to win that, it would just really force that championship to the next level. Yeah. Here he comes. I've not used that actual Sting on this game yet. I've only ever used current day Sting. So I've not seen his they, entrance they, they... or anything. He's not going to have the dodgy normal day Sting entrance, is he? No. Basically, the Bray White ripoff entrance where it cuts off and goes to scorpions everywhere. Once again, a former TV champion. This is the man, the icon, they call Sting. I like the way you got with the 99 version, though, I must admit. There was three versions we could have picked from. There would have been 91 Sting. Where the bleach blonde hair and the surfer gimmick. We could, could have picked the current day Sting. Which, let's be real, didn't really get a good enough run. It's broken. In the current day WWE program, this, in my belief, is the strongest thing we could provide for you, and that can go for the television title. Again, I think it's better to have people in their peak as well, anyway. In this, of course. So I think you've got. Tri have you got Triple H in his peak, or have I give you the other Triple H? Well, it's. Uh, I think I'll give you current day Triple H. I mean. Yeah, the Generation X Triple H. But this is my hot favorite. This is the man that I believe can pick up the TV title. You're going to sting. For Mayhem. You're going to sting. I'm still going to stick with Scott Hall, I think. But again, it could really go either way. Anyone can win it. Anyone can win it. Six man ladder match. Small Chinese child. Here we go. Way. Again, like I said earlier on, this is just a clusterfuck of stuff going on right now. It's a clusterfuck. It's so difficult to commentate on. Whoever climbs that ladder and reaches the belt is the new television champion for the inaugural SWE Mayhem Show. I like the way that so far your and my picks, Scott Hall and Sting, have got zilch aggression in at all because they're both being hammered by other people. They're both being hammered, but anything can happen. It is an open challenge. Ladder matches are crazy. If you've seen the ladder match that was on our WrestleMania card uh, for the Cruiserweight Championship, that lasted like 25 minutes long, that match. Yeah. It really was crazy. And it was a good ending in the end. One thing you have to remember with the ladder match is that the... This is really annoying. The animation for pulling the championship down is slightly delayed. So somebody could win the match and everyone stops, but it doesn't have pulled the championship down yet. So it looks a little bit dodgy, but hopefully we're going to get a good finish in this one. As Booker T is going straight underneath for another ladder. We've already got ladders around the ring. Two ladders out at the minute. 
Scott Hall's got a ladder. And Scott Hall's got a clever idea here. There's nobody in the ring. Well, there wasn't until um, everyone slid in. Perfect. Brought another ladder into the ring. It's all a bit crazy at the moment. Lots of stuff going on. That electric chair dropped by Sting. In the background there on Ricky the Dragon Steamboat. There he goes, uh, Dusty Rose to the outside. We're starting to get to a point now where people start to roll to the outside when they're when they're tired, which is when this match starts to really hit its best parts, I think. You get a lot of opening gaps, you get less men in the ring, you get more time to manoeuvre. And bearing in mind our cruiserweight one we had in the WrestleMania, that was incredible because we saw on some occasions people diving from the top of the ladder onto their opponents, even sometimes outside the ring. That was crazy. So only three men in the ring now. And Dusty's got the ladder and no one's paying much attention to Dusty. But Dusty, uh, I know he does climb the ladder and Sting's got hold of Ricky Steamboat and Dusty is at the top of the ladder. The man that I said had no chance of winning a ladder match is now at the top of the ladder. So Scott Hall's climbing the ladder to join Dusty, but Booker T pushes the ladder over and Dusty, yeah, surprisingly enough, doesn't manage to hold onto the belt for very long. And gets electric chair dropped onto the ladder as well. Yeah, Dusty can't be too happy with the situation that's just uh, led to him. I might believe that might be the only chance that Dusty will get to touch in the gold. I'm not sure Dusty has it in him to climb a ladder twice in one match. No. Dusty, the running hip attack in the corner on Sting. As Scott Hall sending Mr. Perfect Kurt Henning to the outside. Booker T, big close out in the corner. And Dusty sending Sting into the corner once again. And now it's just Dusty and Sting in the ring now. And Dusty might get an opportunity here, but there's no ladder in the ring. If he can do something big here to Sting, what's he going to go for here? Super Slidewalk Slam? I'll tell you what. If Dusty said Super Slidewalk Slam, that would be a real... <laughs> Super Slidewalk Slam. <laughs> that would be a lot of S's in one sentence for <laughs> Dusty Rhodes. Still put five that. that sounds more like um, Frank Bruno, doesn't it? It does sound a little bit like Frank Bruno slash Mike Tyson. Super five bot fam. Dusty Rhodes, an unfavorite. Favorite. He's going again for the gold. He's going again, but Ricky Steamboat's going to join him up there, and Ricky knows what is going on at high heights. Big punches to the gut, and again, oh poor old. And it's your chair shot there. Poor old Dusty. He's trying his best. He is. If Dusty became your first TV, I'd tell you what, I think Scott Hall's going to win. But I'd be surprised if Dusty did win. I still think Sting's going to win it. I've got a feeling that the Stinger will win the television champion for the first time. The Stinger will be the winger. The winner. The winger. The winner. The Stinger winger. The Stinger winger. I can't even say it. We've had too many red stripes. I'm, I'm out. We have too many red stripes. Is there any more left in the fridge? Uh, I believe there's one left. There's one left. We've got some pear ciders now in there anyway. We're fine. Are you ducking out for a pee? I'll have to take over. A couple of elbow drops there. So Ricky Steamboat on the outside on his own now as uh, looks like Sting and Dusty working over Booker T. There goes Booker T over the top rope, crashing to the ground below. Oh, Mr. Perfect has Scott Hall. He's locked him in. Perfect plex there by Mr. Perfect, Kurt Hennig. But is he going to get the chance to climb the ladder? He's not as everyone else comes climbing into the ring straight away. They see exactly what Hennig was looking at there after hitting that perfect plex on Scott Hall. Dusty sent his sting into the corner. Big boot. And again, all these guys really just not giving anyone else the opportunity to climb the ladder. Everyone just trying to stay in the ring for as long as they possibly can. Power slam there by um, Ricky the Dragon Steamboat. And still, just this roster just amazes me at just how good it is. Oh, Dusty, my God, that looked painful. Getting caught with a Saito suplex, back of the head landing on the ladder. And now Booker T is in the ring on his own with the ladder. Booker T not going to get a chance to climb those. Dusty's back up on his feet. And Dusty sending Booker T into the corner. And Booker T, there's the bookend. Booker T with the bookend. 
I thought uh, Kurt Henning was going to get the chance there earlier on. The ladder was set up, but Dusty back on his... And Dusty's going to go for it again. I've noticed there's a lot with ladder matches. You seem to get one person that seems to go for it all the time. And again, Kurt Henning looking to push that ladder over as Scott Hall climbs. And Scott Hall goes down once again. And Dusty once again gets caught with the electric chair. If Dusty does not come out of this with at least a concussion, I'd be very disappointed. Dusty has tried his hardest efforts to win the TV Championship. He has climbed the ladders a numerous amount of times. I think Dusty knows that as Booker T goes up now. Oh, Scott Hall's been busted open as well. Scott Hall trying to climb the ladder to join Booker T up there. Some claret has appeared. I think Dusty knows that the longer this match goes on, the least likely he is to win because he's not necessarily got the best stamina out of these guys. But he can take advantage of everyone's downfall. He can sneak in, given the opportunity. That's it. I think uh, I think he's going to just try to climb the ladder whenever he can. Because he knows that the longer it goes, the more difficult it's going to become. Because he's not going to be able to compete against guys that are much more physically fit, such as Ricky the Dragon Steamboat. Steamboat, what's he going for here? Oh, Steamboat. Steamboat. It looks like a superplex. Oh, Ricky the Dragon Steamboat just kills Sting. Lovely. I don't mean that in physical terms. Of course not. Well, let's hope not anyway. It's a he, super, he hasn't moved yet. It's, it's a super duper plex at that height. Here comes Scott oh, Hall. Scott Hall's going all the way to the top. Scott, he's going, he's no going. way. Oh, big diving elbow and Dusty. Lovely. <laughs> and now Hall's going up to the top. Now he thinks he's got Dusty sorted, but Booker T bring him down with that right hand to the back of the calf. Showing his ladder match history there, Scott Hall. And Booker T now at the top as well. Booker T just went for a... Um, what is that called? It's like a sent on with a leg drop. I know what that's called. It's called something special. And Booker T now up on the top of the ladder. Nobody there. Kurt Hennig in the ring now. Can Kurt Hennig take Booker T down? He is pushed the ladder over. Booker T still holding onto the belt. And Hennig brings him down with the electric chair. But I'm pretty sure Hennig dropped his own spine onto the ladder. He did. And he's still standing. There's many boxes like that in WWE that try and sell, don't they? Of course. Oh, Dusty. Dusty. Is Dusty going to do this? You know, Dusty is I've still got, standing. I've got a sneaky feeling. As much Dusty as I, is still standing. As much as I said that Dusty is the outsider for this, I've got a sneaky feeling he could pull this off, you know. And people laugh when I chose him for the draft. This is the outsider. I did that. This is the wild card. Dusty, the American dream roads. Again, get an electric chair dropped off the top of the ladder. Of course. Onto the ladder as well. As long as Sting. And now Sting's going to set the ladder up, is he? But Scott Hall is stirring. Sting trying to set it up in the right place. He does get it now in the middle of the ring. But there are four men on their feet in the ring, which is not a good place for anybody to try and climb. Sting launching Kurt Hennig to the outside. Booker T getting launched to the outside by Scott Hall. Now Ricky the Dragon Steamboat is back up to his feet as well. And Steamboat, I don't know where Steamboat's climbed the ladder. Everyone else has left. Scott Hall and Kurt Hennig on the way back in. Steamboat almost snuck in. He almost snuck in there when no one thought he was there. And it's going to be that sort of situation, I think. It's going to be someone sneaking in from behind and getting that ladder down without anyone noticing that's going to do this. Sting might not be picking the best time to be taunting the crowd, really. And Dusty's going up again. He's, He's again. got a touch of the belt there. There we go. Both. It took both Sting and... And a powerbomb oh. by Mr. Perfect. Where the hell did the ladder go? It vanished. He powerbombed him with the ladder so hard. It disintegrated. It vanished. That's pretty good. Cool. At least we've got another ladder on the outside. But I, I, yeah. Magic. 2K, if you are watching, which you're blatantly not, that's another problem. Which you probably won't fix anyway. A typical there, DDT Bulldog by Scott Hall. Scott Hall looks like he's lining up for maybe a, a razor's edge here, you know. He looks like a Rager's Edge. And Sting, Sting is going for the gold. Sting is uninterrupted. Here comes Dusty Rhodes. Scott Hall's and disrupts attention. the grab. Or does he? Because Scott Hall's Rager's Edge went straight into the um, into Dusty. Giving Sting the extra bit of time. Sting's had a lot of chance there. But Sting couldn't quite undo the, uh, undo the strap. And he gets brought down with a powerbomb. And Dusty... Uh, you know what, I said that Skull was going to win this, but now, as this goes on, Dusty's getting more and more opportunities. But Booker's going up, Booker's going for the gold here. The ladder that Dusty set up, he can't quite push over, he's trying his best. 
but for some reason can't interact with a ladder. Please don't end this way. It's ended this way. It's disappointing the way it's ended. Dusty couldn't interact with a ladder. But I weigh Booker T. Booker T's your champion. However, the Motel Time TV champion Booker T is the new Mayhem TV champion. So currently you have got now the Briscoe Brothers as your tag team champions with the Sky Blondes as your number one contenders. You have got Eva Lise Velez as your women's champion. You've got Booker T as your television champion. And you're going to either have CM Punk or Samoa Joe as your world champion. Mate, you've, you've really hit the ground running in this first episode. Again, anything can happen on Mayhem as much as anything can happen on Throwdown. And we've still got one more match before that big main event for you. Of course. It's the six-man tag. Hello. And here is our next match of the evening. It is going to be a six-man tag match. We're going to see AJ Styles with the club, Luke Gallows and Carl Anderson, taking on the team of Kurt Angle and American Alpha. Are you ready? Yep. Yep, 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 yep. That Luke Harper. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's what he does, doesn't he? Dude, dude. Do, 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 do. I was so close to getting American Alpha that you picked him, you know. So close to picking him. Just that close. And of course, it was always going to happen when you got Mr. Angle. When you got Kurt Angle, it was always going to happen. With American Alpha, they were the best team in NXT. The flow, the way they put themselves around the ring. They were, I wouldn't say before their time, because they were in their time. Oh, yeah. But the, the, the amateur wrestling background, these are legitimate wrestlers. Yeah, definitely. It's just a shame. I think they've really lost their, they've really lost their steam since they joined the main roster. They were so over so much in NXT. And they really took a, a bit of a clattering on, on the main roster. I think what they should have done was win the championships. This of course you thing... can win the championships, but no gimmicks were changed. No personalities no. were changed. They were the exact product of NXT to the WWE roster. I think that I honestly think they should have come in and just straight away just, just won the tag team championship and won the tournament straight away on SmackDown. Instead of giving it to... I understand they wanted to get Heath Slater on the roster at some way, but... To bring him in with Rhino as a tag team champion seemed a little bit odd to me. And of course, Kurt Angle, the Hall of Famer from 2017. The TNA Hall of Famer Kurt Angle, who will be inducted into the WWE Hall of Fame. This man is the living legend. 1996 Atlanta Olympic gold medalist. This man has been there and seen it. This is, the, again, a living legend. And it's good. I'm, I'm sure that he'll wrestle at least once or twice more. I'm sure We're hoping will. we see him in the Rumble. We hope. I because just, you yeah. cannot end this man's WWE career on a Hall of Fame induction. It can't be done. I'm just sort of annoyed with WWE because if they would have held on to this, if they'd made him return at the Rumble and then announce him as a Hall of Famer, that in my min, uh, in my opinion, in my opinion, would have been amazing if they'd done yeah. that. But instead, mm. to announce him this way, they always seem to they always seem to ruin their own um, surprises. And here come the club, Carl Anderson and Luke Gallows. Again, a tag team. I'm pretty annoyed that I didn't get. It's not about not getting them. These are no nonsense. These are brutality defined. You do not mess with the club. They have been over the world. They know what they are doing. And I think this match as well for the club and for American Alpha will be a good chance for them to show what they've got in the tag team division because, of course, they weren't involved in the tag team championship match or the no more contendership so far this evening. So uh, this is a great chance for one of these two teams to push themselves up the tag team rankings a bit more and really bring themselves into the light. And one thing we have not mentioned, the forgotten rivalry between Kurt Angle and AJ Styles. These guys have been through the wars Oh, yeah. They have been through many matches in the past, and it is great to finally see them here on SWE's Mayhem. 
It's going to be pretty damn cool, this. This could be one of your feuds you set. Well, then again, both Which Kurt mean? Angle and AJ Styles could be it, people you put forward for your it, first tournament. It will be. Yeah. It will be a feud, yeah. yeah. One of the top feuds you're going to have. AJ Styles made his career debut here in the WWE not very sure of a year to the day. A very quick response in the way this man has entered the WWE's universe. I'm happy about that though, because he should be the sort of person who comes straight in and gets pushed straight in the main roster. I, I always thought the Nakamura should as well. I've followed AJ Styles since 2003. He is the main event. Wherever he goes, wherever he laces his boots, this man is the main event. How easy is he? He's, uh, he's, just, he's just phenomenal. He is phenomenal. The phenomenal, phenomenal one. Phenomenal. 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 And he has a fantastic match against many of the people. And I think when we have our tournament towards the end of this month, when he comes up against some of the people in my roster as well, the likes of Okada, Tanahashi, Omega. Imagine Omega... Of course, it was Omega who led the rebellion of Bullet Club against AJ Styles in New Japan. Quite simply, this is a six-man tag that is a dream match once again. And we are underway. Chad Gable and Carl Anderson start things off. A real interesting match, this one. Like you said earlier on, we've got the, uh, the dynamic of the TNA feud as well between AJ Styles and Kurt Angle. And of course, two of the top tag teams in the WWE that I don't think have really been used to their full potential so far. Although American Alpha now are the SmackDown Live tag team champions, I, I just I just feel annoyed that they've um, they've sort of overlooked teams like the Club to force Sheamus and Cesaro in as a tag team. I've, I think it's going to be a short, I thought it's going to be a short term storyline, but it seems to be going on quite a bit. I believe that Sheamus and Cesaro have nowhere else to go. I think WWE writers have literally gave up and went, okay, you two good performers, let's put you together. They've yeah. got no other option for the lads as single competitors. Move Sheamus to, um, no, move Cesaro to SmackDown, he'd be well away, wouldn't he? I think uh, Cesaro will be straight away in SmackDown in the main event picture. I think the problem is with Raw is there's just too many people and they don't know how to get them all on the same card. And use them all effectively. I think that's the problem they've got. Here comes Luke Gallows. I'm glad you got that right. I keep calling him Doc Gallows. I'm just used to it now. The director of Chaos Gallows. I'm surprised he got away with using half his TNA name and half his WWE name when he was over in Japan. Here comes Jason Jordan. Can Angle steal in the other position? Good teamwork there by American Alpha, really uh, taking full control of Luke Gallows. And you see Gallows there going for a high impact move and Chad Gable able to hit him with a, um, a chop block to the back of the knee. Gable needs to leave the ring now before the referee disqualifies him. As Jordan's up on the top rope, he's going to go for some bit high risk. Double axe handles at the back. I was expecting something a lot more spectacular than double axe handles, I must admit, but there you go. Going very retro. So Kurt Angle again is someone who's going to be uh, a very effective member of your... I can't believe how good your roster is, especially the main event picture. When you think you've got Austin, The Rock, Shawn Michaels, Triple H, Kurt Angle, Brock Lesnar, on top of Joe and Punk, <clears throat> and you've got AJ Styles. This list was given to me... Oh, Daniel Bryan. Roughly one month ago by Shabby Gamer. And he told me to look through the list and pick the talent that I believed would produce the best television that we can provide. And I believe that I have picked those talents. The fact that people like The Rock and Austin, Triple H, Shawn Michaels, haven't even got on the card just shows how strong your roster is. We can only provide so many matches in one show, but trust me, in future weeks to come, there will be a variation in talent and professionalism across the board. It's a shame you can't have a trio's championship on this game because that would really suit your roster really well. With DX and these two teams and... There would be so many options. We could choose some for the future. Yeah. Lovely, lovely suplex there from Jason Jordan. 
Obviously, you see the influence Kurt Angle's having on his style. Of course. And you see Jason Jordan here completely out-wrestle AJ Styles. For the moment. For the moment, yeah. We are really awaiting the entrance of Kurt Angle with the returning... He's asking for the tag. ...future WWE Hall of Famer. And uh, one more run, hopefully, as well. Hopefully. Hopefully. Kurt Angle versus Brock Lesnar will do me. Rematch from WrestleMania 19 won't be too bad. No, I like that. Gut wrench suplex there from Jason Jordan. Would they try and force Angle onto Raw as well because there's failing uh, ratings, or would they think they'd allow them to go to SmackDown? They've already taken. He's already a SmackDown man. He's already a SmackDown man. But as was the Undertaker. Here we go. This is. Let's see if they fix this now. They fixed it. No, they have not fixed it. The referee is still. No, the referee is going to count the pin. Oh, the referee is going to count the pin. It looks like they may have very, fixed the game. A very distorted pinfall there by the Alpha. It looks like they may have fixed it. Jason Jordan stands there watching Luke Gallows. See, this is the problem I have with AI in this game. It's a bit retarded. It Eddie doesn't Gre quite work a as well as AI. An Eddie Guerrero influence sent on suplexer. Is that a quesadilla again? I do like a quesadilla. I'm here, comes, now. here comes Kurt Angle for the pinfall. And One, Gable, Gable two. Take all. Gable took out Anderson, but I think uh, AJ managed to kick out anyway. And here comes Kurt Angle. His close. eagerly awaited response here for See, the WWE. this is what we're waiting for for a lot in this match. Angle versus Styles in the it ring together. It is. One on one, this would be fantastic. And it's probably going to be, isn't it? Yeah. You were the man in charge. This is your brand. I wonder if Anderson Gallows are enjoying their time in WWE. Because they're a lot not. more... Well, when you look at some of the backstage videos you used to get from New Japan, they looked like they were just really enjoying themselves and really just doing whatever the hell they wanted. Well, you saw the Finn Balor documentary whilst they was in Japan. That's the main thing I'm thinking of, yeah. They were very looked after over there by Japan. Yeah. They could do whatever they wanted. They could say whatever they wanted. Oh, say whatever you wanted. That that Camacho bit on, on uh, Wrestle, Wrestle Kingdom, Kingdom was just hilarious. But whilst... Coming to the WWE, they are very strict on what they say and what they do, which may yeah. hold back the club. And Anderson, a wow. modified Indian surfboard there. Just stomping the knees of Anderson into the mat. Really going to weaken his future attack as Angle. And a basic there resting attack by Kurt Angle. Good power slam. Or get around the it's back. It's time for German. It's Keep, one. Keeps the grip and rolls the hip. It's two. Keeps the grip and rolls the hip. And here's number three. The trifecta. See, I always thought about this, right? Did he use that before Benoit? Same sort of time. I don't think he did. Same sort of time. Benoit may have used it in WCW. Which is actually spelled W. No, it's Dubsy Dub. Dubsy Dub. Dubsy Dub. The tree of row there for Kurt Angle. What if you might potentially see a magic killer in this match as well? Again, brand new. We've not used these guys. This is the first time I've ever used the club on this game. It's just insane. I, I keep bringing this up at so many occasions. I think that might be Anderson's finish with the running knee strike. Mm. And we've said this on so many occasions. If you would have told me three or four years ago, I'll be playing WWE 2K17 and AJ Styles, Carl Anderson, Doc Gallows, Austin Aries, Samoa Joe, Kevin Steen would all be on. Okay, they just use the magic killer with um, with the wrong person. Oh, Chad Gable just got there in time to just break the Just broke the pin. And a lion salt. Beautiful lion salt. Really good angle against Kurt Angle. Well, of course, pardon the pun. This match is getting close to its finale. You can tell it's just uh, so many good attacks. As Angle... Oh, reversed oh, into reversal. a... Into a crossbody there by AJ Styles. That's Carl Anderson trying to pretend he's a dog. A Death Valley driver onto the knee. 
You see AJ Styles really working on the neck of Kurt Angle. We know that Kurt Angle has had previous problems in the past with his neck. Various neck surgeries. Broke his neck in the Olympics then. He won the gold medal. He did. He won it with a broken neck. So uh, very wise by Kurt Angle to... Uh, very wise by very wise by AJ Styles to work on that uh, weakened neck. I think AJ is calling for the finish here. He's going to go Styles Clash or he's going to roll and improve the calf killer? That's the question. Styles it's the Clash. Styles Clash. It's very, very close to the ropes, but I think he might be okay the way he rolls it. Ah, look at this. They've changed the game. They've changed the game. The coding works well. One, two, three. And it's a win for no, the not. club. It's not. It's a two. It was a two. It's a two count. Oh, that would have been... They've actually changed the game, though, the way the, the coding works better now. They came in to try and block off the opponents. It looks like they've actually read my ticket. It's not over. How I believe it over, was a free count. The Stars Clash is a free count How in the not making. Over, How is it not over? Angling to the ropes there. Drop toe hold into the elbow by Luke Gallows. I can't believe that's not finished. <laughs> Kick to the back. Kurt Angle showing extreme resilience after the attacks the neck as well to kick out the Styles Clash which has notoriously broken a couple of necks in the last few years. Notoriously, In the yes. shape of Lionheart and Yoshitatsu. But the two people with broken necks via AJ Styles. However, I believe that's their own fault. Not they to be did, horrible. They did not prepare themselves and a stiff DDT there. It's the same when we saw the women's match where he just got his feet cut on the top rope. And it's time for ground and pound here from AJ. I think there oh, may be open. bloodshed. It may be Luke Gallows showing blood. Clara is running. And here comes Kurt Angle with basic wrestling moves here with a takedown. It's clever that sort of roll through just sort of disorientates you where you are in the ring. Yeah. Clever little manoeuvre there. Kurt Angle taking a few seconds to really plan his next attack and completely misses the stomp. That was a bad plan, wasn't it, really? AJ sending Gallows. AJ, I'm, I'm not even sending the right people now. AJ's not even in the bloody ring. Oh, nice power slam into the corner. And we are going to see AJ Styles come back in. AJ Styles loves to take advantage of a grounded Kurt Angle. Just taunting the grounded Kurt Angle as well. Typical heel moves, isn't it, really? Coming in when your strongest opponent is already weakened. He's looking for the springboard here. And there springboard it is. 450, lovely. But not content. He wants to continue the assault on Kurt Angle. Could come back to, uh, to haunt him, though. There is the 1916. Or well, the reverse bloody it's Sunday. It's not over yet. It's not over yet here. Styles really looking to put all the damage onto Angle as he possibly can again. Surely that is all. Work on the neck, but no, Angle fighting back. Angle completely no selling. What the hell is Angle going for here? Into a power bomb. He's gone for the pin as well. No, rolls it through. Into a modified Boston Crab. But the rope break for both there. The rope break for the pin and the Boston Crab. Where did he get that from? I have no idea. I do like that move, but I just don't understand where he got it from. Into possibly here into a half leg Boston Crab. It does, but again, rope break. Just too close to the ropes every single time, Kurt Angle. Showing his ring rusty. He takes in, the ring in Chad time. Gable. Now, what's Gable got in his locker? I'm surprised Angle didn't go for a single ankle lock there. Going for a pinfall. One, two. Oh, and completely broken up the took pin. him out. Both members of the club taken out by both members of American Alpha. Kicked by Angle. So at least it seems like the uh, the actual AI of the non-legal members of the winning team seems to be doing pretty well. Mm. They seem to be coming across and trying to block the opponents off, which is something they never really did a lot beforehand. He comes into a modified butterfly suplex. Beautiful there by Chad Gable. Angle here really getting the crowd behind him. But he needs to pay attention to what's happening in the ring, really. He's no use to American Alpha doing that. AJ fighting back with a back elbow. No, he's got him. He's Stars got him clash in. for AJ. He's got him locked Here it in. Is. Stars clash. One, two. 
And two and a half. I think good. I think Jason Jordan got there. I think Jason Jordan got there just in time. I... Still no free count here for the club. It's three on one as it is. They've got to go for the pin now. They've got the chance. Sure, you know. Jason Jordan's back up on the apron as AJ Styles again going for that Death Valley driver onto the knee. It looks like I just saw the a reversal background. from Gable. I think Carl Anderson's right there. Fans around this side now. Jack. Uh, Chad Gable with a butterfly suplex into the armbar. Is he going to tap out? Is he going to tap? Looks like he's going for a belly to belly there. Carl Anderson, but blocked and now cut angle. Catching the German he's suplex and no. He has not tapped out. He rolls him through and breaks free. Cut angle. Beautiful uh, butterfly again suplex again. For the going for it. And angle has exited to the ring. Here comes Stars for the pin. One. Two, exited by Jason Jordan. You're all right. The AI on this game egg. is crazy, isn't it? And the Gallows has took out the referee. <laughs> it took him out of time. He's took out the referee. Yeah, if you're watching this, don't do six-man tags. They don't work. Six-man tags are overly complicated. Here comes Gable okay, for the roll-up. He's uh, it's into a German. On to the referee as well. Who is non-coherent? And even after that Chaos Fury German suplex, the referee is still not going to count it. And no disqualification is needed. Go for, for the pin. pinfall. Just go for the pin now. One. Two. It blocked him off. There we go. It's in. It's in. Chad Gable just pinned J uh, uh, AJ Styles. Chad Gable just pinned AJ Styles after a complete clusterfuck of AI. It wasn't too bad of a finish in the end. At the end of the day, Team Angle, and Team that, American Alpha. That has got to be the biggest pinfall of Chad Gable's career, pinning. What a fantastic AJ result Styles. here. That team is crazy. Angle was leading his team forward to the future. Here is the future. Chad Gable's tiny, isn't he? Really is tiny. So it's Chicago, Illinois. That only means one thing. It's the hometown boy. It has to be. If CM Punk does not win, we riot. We riot. It's Punk versus Joe. For the Mayhem Championship. For the dream match. So by the end of this match, you will have all four of your brand champions crowned. And Lillian Garcia has even made her way all the way here to bugger up the intros for you. Lillian Garcia recently fired by the WWE, returning for one Main event. Fire, which is she, she left, didn't she? She left to look after her father, who I believe actually died a couple of days ago, actually. I can do that anyway. The following match is scheduled for one fall! One fall! One fall! Introducing first, from Chicago, Illinois, the man whose earlobe pops out the side of his hoodie. For some bizarre reason. And his MMA record standing at zero Heroes. wins, zero <laughs> draws, and one loss. It is C M Punk. Good old chick magnet punk. He's been with every female wrestling roster in the company. I can't even be bothered to take his hood down properly. Still can't believe you married AJ AJ Lee. I almost said AJ Styles. I almost no, said he married AJ Styles. He though, fell in love with AJ Lee, so I can't withhold him for what he did. In fairness, I don't blame him, but it is like marrying a 15-year-old girl. You know, which technically is illegal. Very illegal. And here he comes. Samoa Joe. Do, do, do. And here he comes. I'm glad you took Joe. As well, much as I would like Joe to have Punk and Joe on the same, I didn't even think you had Punk and Joe on the same roster. Tell us the truth. I didn't even remember you had them both on the same show, and now I'm just freaking jealous instead. I knew when I put this draft, I had to pick the best of the best, and I did. So I haven't got a clue who I picked. It's a problem. I haven't got a clue who I picked now. The we'll, thing we'll is, find I, out a throw down. I went into this draft pick completely spontaneous. Yeah. If Shabby Gamer did not pick a wrestler 
that I wanted, he was then picked. Yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm very happy with my roster, I really am. But obviously, I'm sure you do the same, but you're looking at some people on my roster thinking, I wish I had them. Oh, definitely. There were times where Shabby Gamer would pick a wrestler where he was my next pick, but he would beat me to the punch. Yeah, I'm happy with mine. I think I did pretty well. That's what it's for, of course, the first ever Mayhem Championship. The belt I created, actually. I'm, I'm happy with that belt. It is a complete ripper. I know, I'll put the little crown on the top as well. It is a WCW looking title, however, slightly and very modified. Here we go. The inaugural Mayhem Champion. It is CM Punk versus Samoa Joe. And here we go. I think the first champions are always remembered. We'll be talking about Tyler Bate for hundreds of years in the future. About that little 19 year old midget who won the but championship. Hopefully, we will continue to talk about the SWE Mayhem Champion. Of course, you've got Tyler Bate and, uh, and Trent Seven on your roster, aren't you? I have got a very varied and modified I was not happy roster. About that. I thought I had them as a, a gimme on this, on this draft. I didn't think you were going to pick them. I have put Tyler Bate forward for Octane, not Trent Seven, just Tyler Bate. So uh, we'll see Tyler Bate in the Cruiserweight show as well. Hopefully. Cruiserweight show's got like 40 members on it. It's been pretty good. And CM Punk wearing the stripes there. Reminiscent of uh, of Macho Man with the starters as well. Of course. I wonder if and I've never seen him in the ring again. Who knows? Money talks. And this is, if you would choose to believe, the first time you will see Samoa Joe in a WWE ring. Mm-hmm. The thing is, I've always said about this with, with Punk. If Punk ever came back now and did the minimal schedule like a lot of these people do, Punk would officially become the person that he hated. Sounds. He would become the the part-time wrestler that gets the pushes over the uh, the people that are there every single day. Same as Cena. Yeah. That's the same thing. And the fact that Cena can come back after about two or three months of being out and demand the championship match and get it at some like a Royal Rumble even. You become the person you hate. Yeah. That's it. And that, that was the whole thing with the Miz's outburst as well, wasn't it, on Talking Smack? And went to a leg lock round the neck of CM Punk. Of course, we're going to see a lot of submissions from Samoa Joe in this one. That's what he's well known for. Punk, much more striking ability, I think. He does have a, a pretty good submission base as well. Samoa Joe a lot more for the thrust kicking. See, Joe needs to pay attention to Punk here. He's allowing Punk to get back up to his feet, and he could live to regret that. Or he could just uh, slam him down to the ground instead. It's uh, either way. Oh, we're going for the back sent on as well. Right. There it is. I'll tell you what, Joe is dominating Punk here in the early process of this match. And I think I know who my money's on to be your first champion here. Anything can happen here at Mayhem Wrestling. Big elbow to the inside of the knee. Reversal by Punk. Now, Punk, can he take advantage of the uh, the, the access he's been given here? Or is Joe just going to get back in control? He's got to get it here with the hometown crowd. Here he is in Chicago, Illinois. That's into a reversal suplex into a driver. Falcon Arrow. That's going to be a massive advantage for CM Punk to have the hometown crowd behind him as well. I've got a feeling he's going to jump straight over his head here, you know. No, he could. He could Into him. a knee drop there. Oh, that's pretty vicious. I'm quite sure what happened there. Two count. Joe again is slamming Punk's face. Nope. Punk slamming Joe's face into the mat, sorry. Here we go. Joe Dragon suplex. Lovely. Such a vicious one, because when, when you hook the arms like that, you can't use your arms to sort of protect yourself as you There's land. There's no defence. No defence at all. You've just... Whoa. Lovely thrust kick there to Joe's side of the head. Tommy End, eat your heart out. On my roster, of course. I've on your Tommy roster, on Throwdown. I've got Tommy End, of course. Lovely German suplex air release. Up to the second rope here by Joe. Into a sense on misses. Oh, Punk avoids it. This one has a lot of weight to come down on you, that is. A quick reversal there by Joe. Double X handle. 
Just into so you know. again a butterfly back oh, suplex and holds it. Only a two. Again, Joe just getting uh, getting fixated by the crowd here. But I think he's got the chance to do it now as, as Punk's still grounded. Is there a possible chance he could be overly confident here of taking Punk on for the title? There you go, Punk playing possum, catch him with the jawbreaker. He's going to go for a Pepsi plunge. No, he's going to go to the backbreaker. The Pepsi plunge was an insane move, wasn't it? It was. Into a sidekick. Into the into the ropes and a double drop kick neck into a well. breaker. Oh, he's going for the code. He's going for the. Um, I forgot what it's called. It's been that bloody long. I forgot. It's not the Kimura lock. Is it the Kimura? No, it's not the Kimura lock. I don't know what it is, but he could tap out soon. Anaconda. And he has tapped. It's the he has no, he's tapped. Not. No, he's got out. No, he's got. He's released. It's the Anaconda Vice. Into the Hurricane Rana by the by Punk. Anaconda Vice, that was it. I knew it had a name and I forgot what the name was. He's got Into him up. Into an S. He's got him up. He's going to go for it. It's GTS time and it is there. Oh, he's hit the Punk GTS. has hit the GTS. He took a bit of time. And Joe is down. One, two... And free CM Punk, Punk is the inaugural Mayhem Champion. Punk's done it. Punk has done it. So your champions now. CM Punk. Wow. Chicago made in his hometown. It was always going to happen. It was always going to happen. It's the result we wanted to happen. So CM Punk. Booker T. Booker T. Eva Lease and the Briscoe Brothers. That is a pretty damn strong set of champions. That's a pretty damn strong championship outset. That is amazing. That really, really is. And the of course, GTS Punk, finishing him off. Yeah, I'm surprised by that. It's in a big championship match like this, you would have thought that, that Joe might have had that extra bit in the locker to maybe kick out from that, but. Evidently, Joe dominated the majority of that match as well. He dominated, but no doubt he will be claiming his rematch clause at some point in the future. Of course, we've got a big pay-per-view coming up in a few weeks' time. Of course. And of course, rematch. that big pay-per-view is going to be a tournament as well, so we need to get some names from you who you want to put forward Definitely. For that. I'll do that before. <laughs> so I think that's about it. You got anything to add to the show? All I want to say, it was a great inaugural show here for Mayhem. I believe that I've produced one of the best shows I possibly can but please keep your ear out here for throwdown I believe that this will be a fantastic show for SWE please keep tuned is that it of course we've got next is going to be an episode of showdown tomorrow I think which is a minor show so we probably have we might have five matches on that just as a first off just to just get the roster going but that is an all-female show and then we will have Throwdown for you after that. And, of course, Octane after that as well. Um, of course, as always, if you have enjoyed this episode, then please let us know by hitting that like button. And let us know what you thought about this first episode of Mayhem. It really would help us out in the comment section below. If you've got any suggestions, any comments, anything you've liked, anything you don't like, just let us know in the comment section below. And, of course, if you have enjoyed it and you want to see some more, then, of course, hit that subscribe button as well. I've been Shabby Gamer, And I've been PJ Tovey. Thank you for watching. And I'll see you very, very soon for our next episode of our Universe Mode. <laughs>